how did getting stabbed and losing mobility to my right thumb, my dominant hand, for half a year help me to go on to build a plastic into fuel reactor five years ago? Most people aren't aware, but a major part of my journey of turning plastic waste into fuel was actually when I was in 12th grade, I was stabbed by a classmate. He came to class with a knife one day, was playing around with it, and my hand ended up in the way, and then I got stabbed, and you can see the, the surgery mark there. And my tendon was sliced, so I could literally not move my thumb. You know, it's kind of weird until you're in that position, but like people were over there telling me, can you move it? And I'm like, it, you literally can't. Like, you send the signal for it to move, and it just does not, because it's kind of like power lines. Your tendons are kind of like power lines that connect uh, your your um your fingers to the rest of your uh your body and that was just cut so it's like well if your power line is cut there's no power you know without a tendon there's no motion and so I literally could not move my thumb this was the first time in my life that I had to undergo any type of surgery or physical therapy and I lost mobility the first time being disabled in any type of way now mind you my whole life I've been such a kinesthetic person with my hands especially. And at that moment, I did jewelry. I was making jewelry. I was gardening. I was welding. You know, I always loved Legos. And I couldn't do any of these things I loved anymore because, of course, well, my <laughs> my thumb literally would not move. Um, and so I had to end up getting surgery. And then I was in splints. And then, you know, goodness gracious, it was crazy and very, very tough for me. But you see, I I saw this position I was in. And as sad as it was, as depressed as it did make me, I kind of had to alchemize it and flip it to be my benefit. And you see, it's kind of like, you know, if you're blind, your ears are really good. And if you're deaf, your eyes are really good, right? You have to kind of compensate for what you don't have. And so even though I couldn't physically do things as much anymore, I instead started to use my mind more than ever. I started to research, take that time to research, knowing, okay, I will have my, mo my mobility back one day. Right. <laughs> Let's hope and pray. But assuming I will, when I do, I want to come back stronger than ever. And so I started to research the process of pyrolysis and all this was happening. I was still in school, 12th grade. And so I started to research the process of pyrolysis. And then, well, as soon as I got my hands back, I set my sights on, OK, I'm going to get ahead in my welding class because I've been you know, missing months and months of class. And when I get ahead, I'm going to build my first machine in the class there, right? Because I wanted to find a solution to plastic waste. And so, of course, that's my story. And, you know, that's my experience, what I went through being stabbed, losing mobility of my thumb. But how does this apply to you? Well, it applies to you because, you see, there's a universal law of alchemy, you could say, you know, taking lead and turning it into gold where well, you're taking a situation that's poor, a situation that's not good, and you're going to turn it into gold, turn it into something good and you see it's all in perspective okay perspective is this perspective is being able to see something that may have been a disadvantage and seeing the advantage in it like i said kind of going back to what i was saying there's like a video of a guy that's uh, blind and he literally developed his own form of echolocation most of us couldn't even get echolocation if we tried but because he couldn't see he saw the pers ironically saw a different perspective through it and saw what he could do with it because your your ears are exceptional when you have no sight you can't rely on it and so it's the same situation with this i couldn't rely on my hands but that allowed m my more tinkery thought process to take over my more research-based thought process to take over now i don't know what position you're in i don't you might have been stabbed you may have not been stabbed you may have just lost your job there's a lot of things that can happen in fact there's probably infinite things that can happen to us that are bad but there's also infinite things that can happen to us that are good but here's the difference right bad things tend to just happen <laughs> to us unfortunately right but good things usually we have to go out and get them we have to kind of balance ourselves and we have to find ourselves and, and the truth is it's all within right because if you rely on external things well external things can always be taken away right like i said my whole life i've been able to build great you know i had a gift with building with my hands it was taken away and then you kind of get into this depression i was the most depressed ever but you see it's all in your perspective and building towards something because the truth is this if you're always building towards something 
even if it's mentally and spiritually because you're physically disabled if you're always building you're always in motion you're not becoming stagnant you're not going to get sucked into this spiral of of continuing to get you know deeper and deeper into depression i mean i can't even emphasize how deep of a depression that did put me in seriously because like i said my whole life i always been able to kind of escape by building you know if i felt sad or if i was angry i go out i make jewelry go out garden couldn't do that and then I was angry at the guy that stabbed me the whole time going through all that and I had no escape. And that's why I'm telling you guys when I'm saying it's internal. If you rely on the external, you actually end up kind of being at a loss long term. So whatever it is that your trial and tribulation is, it's all about your perspective. That's the only thing you can control. We have zero control over what happens to us. I don't care what you, I don't care if you're a billionaire. You can you it's a more of an illusion of control. You might have more opportunities, but ultimately whatever happens to you is really in the hands of fate, you know, like I said, I mean, you could have everything and just get struck by a lightning bolt, you're paralyzed. Doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, that could happen to anybody. But it's not about, the power is not about <laughs> trying to prevent something from happening. The true power comes from actual meekness. The true power comes from no matter what happens to you, you take control of the situation because you have the perspective and the vision to see whatever happens to you for your benefit. That's that is true power right there. That's true power. So that's what I encourage you to do. It's hard. I still don't do it to this day. It, you know, it probably will take a lifetime to master, but having it in your awareness and your consciousness and working towards it is all that matters. So that's what I recommend to every single one of you. And um, that's a huge part of my journey of turning plastic into fuel. And as a matter of fact, if this didn't happen, I may not be doing what I'm known for today. So see everything to your benefit. Uh, trillionaires Club.